12-year-old Noam Avigdori and her mother Sharon Avigdori held by Hamas on the 7th of October, and they had been visiting family at Kibbutz Be'eri on that day. They were abducted with 10 relatives and several family members were killed. Noam and Sharon were freed on Saturday as part of this current hostage deal. And so now we welcome Adi Shahar, the aunt of Noam and sister-in-law of Sharon, joining us from Sheba Medical Center. Yes. Cannot imagine what a moment. A mother and daughter freed from captivity yes. after seven harrowing weeks. Take us to the moment when you saw them again. What can you tell us? Good evening. Good evening. It's the first time since the October the 7th that I can say good evening, <laughs> a really good evening. I can imagine. Um, it was it, it was a, a dream come true, it, really, it was a dream come true. It was a nightmare of, of 50 nights uh, and days uh, that we f fought for them to come. We fought for everyone to understand that there is no um, victory picture without taking the whole hostage, hostages out of, of there. We need them back. And as you can see, I, I can look. I, I, I don't even have to explain everything or to tell you anything. Look at my brother kissing his wife. Look at, 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 at my sister-in-law and her son and, and the grandmother on the left over there. It just, I can't say anything that, that, that the moments can express themselves, the picture can express themselves. themselves. Adi, you're so right. Looking at those pictures sums it all up. It's just unimaginable to think what all the family had been through for seven harrowing weeks. Talk to us about that time. Talk to us about what went through your mind, your family's mind. What were you thinking? What did you know? What stands out as you look back on the last seven weeks? Oh, it's, it's been such a long weeks. Um, it started in a few weeks that we didn't know anything about them. We didn't know even that they, they were missing. The status was missing, and we just um, kept um, reaching for any piece of information, where they are, what, what, are they dead, are they a hostage, what are going on, uh, and then we got the status of kidnapped, which was relief, really, it was a relief, because as you said, um, some of our member, a family member was, uh, were killed uh, on this horrible uh, Saturday. So um, we knew everyone uh, is kidnapped. Where there were seven kidnapped, as you can see them right now. Uh, and then when we understood this, this their status, we just start fighting for them to come back. We had to um, to make sure everyone knows that the victory victory picture is that picture that you can see here. That every family needs, and we are still fighting for that because every family have the right to feel as I feel now when I see um, my sister-in-law and my, my, um, my niece back home safe and happy. And they're just civilians, you know, they're not in even, not a part in a war. You can't imagine that, that it, we still can't believe that it's really happened. It's like a bad movie but sometimes I feel I'm looking uh, at the side, from the side. It is, it is surreal, I think for the whole nation and we just cannot imagine what people who are directly affected, who have family, who were killed on that day and then family abducted and not knowing if they're alive or not, it is unfathomable. Adi, take us to the moment you heard when they were on the list, so to speak, that you got the message that they were on the list and were set to come home, how did that feel? Um, to, to be honest, I was frightened. It, I, I, I was I was so afraid that someone something will go wrong. It's like it's like the most uh, uh, long hours in those seven uh, uh, weeks. The, the the time just can't. 
that didn't move. We just go slowly, minute by minute. Uh, and as you know, there were some difficulties and it lasts longer than we, it's supposed to be. And we started to think, what if they're not going to come back home today, tonight, or even, you know, just that they will disappear again. It was, um, but then we, we said, we are, we are a strong family. We are a big family. And with my brother, of course, and with his son, we sat together and just hold with a very big hope that they will come, that it will be a good end for us for now. And I have to, remember, to remind all of us, we still have one uh, member family there. Tal Shoam, it's there. Um, and we want to, to bring him back. We want to bring everyone back. We are looking at those images on the screen, those hugs, we're feeling it, we can sense the joy, and obviously we are fully aware that there are certain issues that we won't be discussing at this point. Obviously everybody needs time to process, but I wonder if you're comfortable talking about the images we've been discussing here of people who were made to wave and smile as they were taken by armed terrorists into vehicles on their way home. Are you comfortable telling us how it felt to look at those images and see people having to pretend that they were smiling as armed men, the terrorists who'd held them for seven weeks, were helping them ostensibly to get on a vehicle heading back to Israel? To be honest with you, I just saw my uh, sister-in-law and my niece can wave, can smile, mm -hmm. there and, and go with our, our, uh, on their feet. So I really doesn't doesn't matter for me uh, how they feel, what they do, if they wave or not. It just doesn't that doesn't matter for us really. Just to know that they were coming home was meaningful enough and a game changer enough. Yeah. Your thoughts on the Red Cross not being able to get access to the hostages so far in, it's more than seven weeks now, and you have relatives, as you said, still being held hostage, no clarity on their condition. How does it feel knowing that this international organization hasn't got its ducks in a row to get to find out the basic information about the hostages' condition and the medicines that they still need after seven unimaginable weeks. It's outrageous, really. It's, it's the whole purpose of this organization. Go there, find out some information, take our letters, give them our letters, give them medicine, give them hope, give us information what is going on with them. They are in several places, uh, underground, below ground, everywhere, we don't know anything. And it just can't, I can't imagine, I can think of one reason why it's going on like this. It's really outrageous. We, there were a delegation that, go to the, that went to, to see the Pope for that. It's, it's so basic, it's so basic, and, and we saw that the, the Red Cross is, is over there, right? Because he take the hostage, hostages sorry, at the, out. So why can he, can't he go in and do his work? This is the purpose of this organization. I can't understand it. I really can't understand it. It's certainly a question many people across this region, for sure, are asking. Very briefly, we don't have much time left, but we've been talking about the fact that there is a report that this truce may be extended in order to try to secure the release of more hostages. Your feelings on that move? Very briefly, please. Look, I'm not an strategist. I'm not a military. I'm a, c a civilian that want every civilian going back home. So for me, Every uh, every move that uh, everything that uh, have to do with it to do to get it, do it, do it. The, the, uh, it's a short period of time that we can do it. This is the time. Do it now. Adi Shahar, thank you so much for speaking to us. We so appreciate you being with us today. And best wishes, of course, to all the family. May you have many, many more hugs, special moments like we saw. Our hearts are with you and our hearts are with your family and all the hostages. May they all come home. May they all come home safely. Thank you very much for being with us on I24 News. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.